My next speaker is Gary, and he's here to talk about a different kind of engineering, engineering of relationships, uh, soft skills. Uh, uh, he is talking about authenticity in an artificial world, where he will share the hard won lessons of uh, developing soft skills and advices that he wish wishes he had received 30 years ago. Um, so yeah, let's welcome Gary to the stage. I'm 24 years old, and I'm sitting in a boardroom. That's a while back. It was about 2002. I'm in the boardroom and I'm there with my developer friends, my colleagues, the CEOs there, everyone, all the stakeholders are there because we're things are just not going well. I'm in my dream job. I'm working for one of the largest technical companies in the world. And I know my stuff. I've got degrees, I've got certifications under my belt. I'm known for my technical excellence. I'm a problem solver. And I've got some stuff I want to share in that room that solves the problems. But all I can see is people talking over each other. And I can't get into the conversation. I try to speak up and say some stuff, but it just, no one listens to me. Maybe my ideas don't matter. So I just sit there quietly. And the conversation goes on and the meeting ends. And I'm feeling quite worthless. I didn't get to share my big ideas, my areas of ex expertise that could have maybe made a difference. It wasn't that long after that I was speaking to the project manager and I said, look, I shared my ideas with her and she said, Gary, they are fantastic ideas. Why didn't you say something? And I was speechless. I wanted to say something, but I just couldn't. And I realized that my soft skills, my human skills, my interpersonal skills, my communication skills, they were lacking a little bit. And if I was really honest with myself, my social skills in general outside of work were lacking. And I knew I had to do something about that. And so my soft skills journey started. And today I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that I found and developed that have made a massive difference for my career my life in general, my social life and my romantic life. Have you seen this article? 84% of the workforce insists that job candidates must demonstrate soft skills. Published it here in Forbes. The article goes on a bit further and it cites a study by Deloitte. It says 92% of the company survey say that soft skills are as important, if not more important, than hard skills alone. Goes a step further. Of all the companies surveyed, guess which was number one at 99% citing soft skills are important? IT and telecommunications. We are in an industry and we rely on our, our technical skills, our hard skills, that's what we train on, but they're not enough. And I was learning this the hard way. So today I'm going to teach you, or I'm going to show you a technique that will help you, I'll let you in a little secret, that will let you not only read a room, but actually take the lead of the conversation in that room. I'll show you how you can jazz up your presentation skills and surprise people through the art of storytelling. And I'm going to show you how you can find success and courage in a cup of coffee. Leading the room. This is a skill I wish I knew when I was sitting in that boardroom all, boardroom all those years ago. I could see everybody talking over everybody else. No one was really agreeing on what the problem was. And we weren't really getting to a solution. What I come to learn and realize is that everybody thinks and talks at different levels of abstraction. There are those of us that are engineers and developers and we like the nuts and bolts. We like the details of what's going on. There are other people in the room or in that room, who are the big picture thinkers, the CEOs, the sales team, marketing, 
They're thinking of the company as a whole, what the customers want. They're not worried about the nuts and bolts like we are. And then for illustrative purposes, purposes there are people in the middle. And we might just, for example, say that they are the uh, product managers and project managers. They're not super big picture thinkers. They're not super detailed pe pe uh, thinkers either. Just having that reference of how people think tells you what people think are important. The CEO might be talking about the customers. The engineers might be talking about the databases, two different levels of abstraction. And if you can sit back and observe what people are saying and where the conversation is in a room and where it fits on this type of a spectrum, you now have a skill where you can read the room and work out where a, where a conversation is at. When I was in that boardroom, the conversation was a bit higher. I was trying to come in with technical solutions when no one cared. That's not where the conversation was. But I learned to read the room and come into the conversation where the conversation was in that room. And that made a significant difference to how I can come into a conversation. And no doubt that if this is something you like, you will be able to do the same thing. Now I call that leading the room, sorry, reading the room. That's a level one skill. But if you can come into the conversation and see what's happening, you can take it a step further. And this is where you can start to actually lead the room and the conversation. And if you're looking for leadership skills, career advancement, this is a really handy tool to have. If you can enter the conversation, read the room, you can enter the conversation by asking questions. You frame questions, why questions, what questions, and how questions. And you can direct the conversation in that room towards the bigger picture or towards the detail. What's that look like? You start asking why questions. All of a sudden, you're bringing people up to think bigger. You're asking why, you're opening up to bigger pictures you're bringing people to the top of that spectrum. You ask what type questions, and all of a sudden you're digging down into the details. You're looking for solutions to problems. Or you start asking how type questions, and all of a sudden you're exploring and brainstorming other ideas at a certain level of abstraction. Three simple questions that can help you take control of a conversation in the room. Now, not everyone in the room is going to know this, but you do now. There's one more power to this. In that boardroom, everyone was talking over each other and they couldn't come to agreement on what the problem was. But if you can read the room and take control of the room and you can start asking why type questions, what you do is you start to raise people up in their level of, a th level of thinking towards a bigger picture. And what you find is people start to come to agreement on what the big problem is. Everyone in that room will start to feel that they have had their problem heard at the high level and they'll be all unconsciously agreeing and be happy. And then you can come in with your what questions to start diving down and find the root cause of the problems or how to explore, explore a broader perspective of problems. Uh, different types uh, of solutions. So that is reading the room. That's a level one skill. And then leading the room, a level two skill. And if you're looking for career advancement, leadership, these are absolute great skills to have. <clears throat> leadership is an action, not a position. Donald McGannis, doesn't matter who you are in that room, you can take a leadership position. Storytelling. I'm about 33 years old at this stage. I'm in a leadership position and different company and the project's not going well. And I've got to deliver some news that's a bit of a bombshell and I really don't want to deliver it. And you're not going to guess how I got out of this one. 
well, I'm procrastinating. I'm sitting at the couch at home, on the couch with the kids watching cartoons. And Dora the Explorer comes on. Anyone here got kids? You know who Dora, Dora is? Yeah, I know, I've worked with some of you, you know where this is going. Well, Dora starts with a map. Every, every episode is, follows a pretty simple formula. Dora has a little journey to go on. <coughs> and um, she has a friend, Matt, who shows her the path that she's got to go on. Now, in this particular episode, Dora and her friend Boots there, who, who is her little sidekick, he's lost his toy and it's at the top of the snowy mountain. And Matt says, well, she's got to go through the crocodile infested lake and through the spooky tunnel and then some mount, snowy mountain to get Boots' toy back. Now I'm sitting at home watching this and I'm going, gee, this, this is just like a week at work. <laughs> it's, I've got a feature here or a bug I'm working on. And I want to get up, I want to get to here, or my team wants to get to here. We want to leave with a result and delight the customer. And he, here's all the obstacles we've got to get through on, the, on that path. And I was like, bing, I just, I have a light bulb moment. This is all I have to do to deliver that news. I haven't, I haven't said this. I'm sitting on the couch. That meeting is tomorrow, and I haven't started. So I am with this information, I think, I've just got to come in and tell a story. And this sets me off on storytelling. I'll let you know the secret. Do you want to know how to make your presentations and your updates extremely boring? Use bullet point. Because you read the first one in a monolithic tone, and you read the next one in a monolithic tone, and by the time you get the third one, no one's really interested in paying attention. But if you can learn to storytell, you'll add a, a lot of pizzazz and interest to your, present, your um, presentations, your updates, your scrum updates, your stand ups in ways that you never imagined possible. That's what I did, and I believe you all can do too. We're all developers. We're all smart people in this room. We're all creative people, because software development is a creative activity. This is just a different form of creativity. Here's just a couple of examples over the years that I've, I've put together. Storytelling with pictures. I'm not going to go through the stories, but you don't have to go real, real fancy. It's just taking some pictures, throwing them on the site, and talking and deliver, telling a story about what happens. I started with simple pictures. I ended up telling full cartoon skits. And it took me no more than an hour to actually throw these things together. Um, in the end, at the end of the day, changed the way I gave presentations, the way I gave updates. Um, and it was really powerful because I started to be able to deliver uncomfortable news in a light, uplifting tone and inspiring people and, and, the, and the team about what was happening. So this is storytelling. And I encourage you all to have a play with it. And if you want to remember a simple formula to tell stories using your Dora type framework, it's simply Dora. Departure. Nowhere on that map you're departing from. You're implementing a feature, fixing a bug. Are you at the start? Or are you somewhere along that journey? Obstacles. What obstacles? Have you encountered and how did you overcome them? Or what are you going to encounter and how are you going to overcome come them? Keeps everyone on the same page, keeps it solution oriented. R is for result. What's that result that, or the goal you're going for? This sets the context and frames how you deliver your story. And the A, well, you can just tell a story. If you go to the next level and actually start doing some pictures and cartoon scripts, then you get the A, you will be amazing. It takes a bit of practice and you get to get the groove going and it can be a lot of fun. Oh. 
This is a quote from Einstein. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, then you don't understand it yourself. Using a form of storytelling framework, when you give a presentation or you give an update, it puts you into the frame of mind where you are distilling complex information. And we all work in complex information, but it allows us to present it in a way that actually makes sense to non-technical people. And that is an absolutely awesome skill to develop. Take you very far if you can talk to non-technical people and deliver complex material easily. Coffee. Does anyone like coffee? Yeah, our thoughts though. We the developers, we drink a little bit too much coffee, don't we? I spent a lot of time reading and learning about soft skills and people skills and putting myself into positions where I would have to try and ask for things, putting myself in uncomfortable positions where I have to find courage. And I kept doing that until I sort of built the soft skills up and the ability to talk and present and, and, and just become more human. And then someone told me about this technique and I wish I had have known this 30 years ago. Would anyone like a free coffee? Yeah. I'm going to let you in with a secret. I'm going to tell you how you can all get a free cup of coffee. You interested in that? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually, it's actually quite simple. Two steps. It's called the coffee challenge. Some of you may have heard of this. Okay. Two simple steps to get a free coffee. You go up to your barista and you go, may I please have a coffee? And you say, can I please have it for free? You still want your free coffee? First time I tried this, first time I heard of it, I thought, that's easy. <laughs> and then when I first had to do it, I found all the courage and all the scaredness, come, it came back. This is a simple idea. It takes a lot of courage to do it. And that's why you can find courage in a cup of coffee. If you do this, you win. You always win. You win because you get a free cup of coffee or a hot chocolate or whatever beverage. Or you win because you plucked up the courage and the confidence to go and face the fear of rejection and ask for something that you want. You win. And you reflect and you can go back and you can do it again. I encourage you to all go and have a crack at the coffee challenge. We are in Melbourne. There is a coffee, there is a cafe on every street corner and five in between those three corners. There's no excuse for not practicing your coffee, your courage every day and winning free coffee. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. And embodied in that coffee challenge is your ability to take some courage and make a decision. And I'm sure Church, uh, Winston Churchill uttered those lines when he was <laughs> undertaking <laughs> the coffee challenge. No doubt about it. Question time. I'll let you in with a secret about how to not only read a room, but lead a room. I've told you how you can add some surprise to your uh, scrum updates, stand-ups through storytelling. And I've told you, told you how you can find success and courage in a cup of coffee. Questions? No question. Just want to have another uh, idea. Yep. If you pay by coins, they will say coffee's on the house. <laughs> well, ah, yeah. Is that a Melbourne thing? I have tried that. Oh, I see. I live in the country. That's we still use cash down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. How many free copies do you have? <laughs> I don't know how many free copies. I've probably got dozens. Like I don't do it every time I get a free copy. No, <laughs> sorry, I don't do it every time I get a copy. So it's like hundred percent work. No, it doesn't hundred percent work. <laughs> You are guaranteed to get a coffee if you keep going. The most uncomfortable coffee you will get will be the first one. So the first time you ask for it. I can guarantee you, you get that first coffee. It's not about the coffee. The exhilaration of actually having done it and got the free coffee <laughs> rumps the coffee. The coffee won't matter. <laughs> I, I can guarantee, guarantee it. Yes. What is the worst reaction you have got asking for <laughs> most people have been very polite the more complex one is i've got to go and ask the manager <laughs> <laughs> you almost get some people just if you you're practicing some you're practicing your art of persuasion and um most people most people are very polite no question about that and in fact some of them will be shocked because they've been asked that question <laughs> um, did you anticipate that all the questions would be about the coffee situation? <laughs> no, I thought that would have, I thought that would have been about leading the room, <laughs> but not about the coffee challenge. I'm surprised because th this is the one that takes the most courage and the one that most people... Th th leading the room is something that we're real logically minded people. We, we generally get the idea of that. It's something you can practice in the next meeting. It's not hard. Storytelling takes a little bit more courage just to get out of your comfort zone and start just telling a story instead of just putting bullet points all over the slide. The coffee challenge, that's for the real gutsy action takers. Um, and you're all gutsy action takers by the sounds of it. So. I have a question about leading the room. Yes. Um, you know, all those questions are great, but you've got to get into that position of getting their attention in the first place. How would you, how would you think of a question? That is the idea about reading the room, just observing the conversation that is happening in the room. What are people talking about? You'll probably, I'm, I'm just generalizing here, that you'll find people who are more of a big picture thinkers, your CEOs, your sales, I'll be talking about the customers and the impact of some problem that's, that's affecting the company or the customers and the developers will be talking about, well, it's a database, it's too slow, or we need caching or bigger VMs or something. You'll get an idea where people are talking about what's important and the conversation will just land somewhere. And let's just say it's in the middle somewhere. Join the conversation at that level that is happening. Don't be like me back in that boardroom where I'm trying to join the conversation down here when the conversation's up here. No one's wanting to hear about the database problems when the CEO is talking about the impact on the customers. He don't, no one cares. So you join the conversation up here and then you can actually bring it down to the specific because once people feel heard at that higher level, they'll be unconsciously, yes, I'm, we're all agreeing. You're, going, you're bringing people up to agreement. Everyone feels agreed, then you can bring them down. It, it's a skill to take practice, but it's very powerful. Any other questions? I do have another question about the role. Yes. Um, so I found that mostly in the engineering world, so we spend a lot of time in the what and the how. Yes. But then there's like endless meetings about how are we going to be doing this? How are we going to be solving this problem? Is that going to create another problem? So how do you manage to put that when in the middle? Because sometimes it's just like the, the meeting ends and no, no one actually takes action of when are we fixing this. We know the how, but we don't, we don't know the when. That's a um, really good question. That sounds like a different, um, different kettle. Yeah. This is really useful if you're in a room with different stakeholders who think at different levels. Now, it is context dependent, obviously. If you're in a, we're in a room of developers, some people will be talking bigger, some will be talking um, more detail. But I'll, I'll give you the same, same advice. Take control of the conversation and try, try to go up. Try to get everybody focused on the highest point of abstraction where you're all agreeing this is what needs to be done. Because if, if if you're we're in a room and we're all talking about this and doing that, and there's multiple solutions coming out, well, maybe we haven't got to the bigger problem, the like the higher level of an idea of what we're trying to solve. So we're all trying to solve different problems in our own minds. So go up. 
go up to get agreement on the problem we're solving, then go down so we're all you're on a you're on a common um, understanding of what you're trying to do, and you should all agree on the solution you're doing. Does that help? Well, that, that doesn't really tell you know when. Is that is that in, do you have any advice on to how to establish you know like a, is is there, is it, is your approach like follow up with another meeting or I don't know putting some bullet points into this is how we're going to be doing this and you know by this date. Okay, okay, so I think you, you're talking about something a little bit different. This is a this is a technique and a skill to sort of like read what's happening in a room and take control of the conversation. Okay. You sound like you might be more talking about actually having um, taking minutes of a meeting and having a, like an action master action list or something that you can actually take take minutes of what's happened in that room so that next meeting you can go well who's done what this and has this been achieved? Is that yeah, sort of help? Yeah, that helps too. Yeah. If you've got any other questions, I'm, I'm around. Just yeah, grab me. Any raw question there? All feeling needing to run off and get a coffee? Three months. <laughs> so when I was in that boardroom, I realised that uh, I needed to do something about my soft skills. When I approached that project manager and she said, Gary, why didn't you just share your ideas? She made it seem like it should be so simple just to speak up and share what I knew or ask for what I wanted, but it wasn't. It was scary for me. I couldn't do it. And I really thought I had to, I really thought that, well, I'm great technically, but I've got to be someone that I'm not if I want to succeed and go any further in my career or my maybe life in general. I'm just not a people person. That's what I thought I was. But when I started to find my way out, I started to look at techniques that worked and made sense to me that I could apply. And that's what I did. I found things that worked for me and they changed the way I looked at my career and the way I interacted with people. They took my career to new heights. I, got, I learned to ask for things. Maybe you want to ask for a pay rise or a new position or a new piece of technology. Maybe you want to ask somebody out. Whatever it is, learning some soft skills. The stats say we need them professionally. There's no question about that. But learning some soft skills will take, take you to new heights in all places beyond just your career. And when you do this, and I really encourage you to do it, just be yourself. Just be your authentic self, not who you think you need to become. Just be your authentic self and you'll be absolutely amazing. Thank you. <laughs>